Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche pregame show presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR when you sign up for a new account. Megan and Ruto coming to you live to talk a little bit about some Avalanche hockey versus the New York Rangers. I think we both feel a little better than against Boston at very least. So that's a positive. Obviously, the big news, game time decision, Val Nichushkin in. How big is it for the Avs, man? <laughs> Honestly, looking at this Rangers team, they have very similar look on paper, but the extent of their problems has not come close to the extent of the Avalanche problems. But similarities in that they've had depth playing up in their lineup. The Avs have obviously had to rely on their depth stepping up, and it's just not been to the same extent for the Rangers as it has been for the Avs. And so getting a little small piece of that back to the forward group is huge, especially to build off of a Boston game that was tough because – Liked a lot that we saw in the work ethic of that game. It just, they did not have the right pieces. So this is a step in the right direction. It's it's just a top six player, right? All of a sudden, you go from having one player in your top six to at least you can go, okay, you have Miko, you have Val. Maybe your top guys can do a little bit more than just survive out there, right? That's Or at least that's the hope. You never know. Uh I, I'll be honest, as Banks gives us $5 here saying anyone feeling a Val point tonight. My expectations are super low. This is a guy who hasn't skated in over a month now. So not expecting like a, a big blowout night. It's usually Miko's the guy who has pop-off nights on his return. But hey, look, just him being in the lineup is a, a huge step to get players playing back to roles that they're used to, right? And and obviously, they're still not there. They need multiple more people to return to really feel like they're there. But every piece helps. So great news for the Avs that Val is back. Uh, we know Helm is quite close as well. So yes. see if he's good to go Sunday. And Lekkonen. Yeah, Honestly, yeah. Lekkonen practice, took full practice today. Regular contact jersey, just following protocol a little closely. Don't hate that. Don't hate that two in a game with Jacob Truba. I don't mind them keeping Lackanen out. Yeah. I, I, again, the Avs are looking at this a little bit longer term. They want to be healthy by the end of December, right? There's no need to to push things, even if it is a little tough to watch at times right now. So is what it is. Part of the deal tonight, Brad Hunt getting called up to play with the Avs. Uh, going to be honest... Don't know how much he's going to help the Avs defensively, but, you know, Avs are looking for pretty much anything offensively tonight, right? One goal at five on five in the last two games. And that's something you can count on Brad Hunt to contribute more so than an Andreas Englund type of player, Josh Jacobs, who was kind of in this depth chart of someone that could be called up to give them reinforcement in their decor. Yep. Brad Hunt is the guy if you are looking for a little more offense because off offensively right he's quarterbacking their top power play unit in Loveland he's their points leader right now as a result of that also has a lot of leadership don't think I've seen a guy happier to be playing hockey than Brad Hunt (laughs) he's one of their alternate captains right now so there are a lot of good things that he brings to the table the shortcomings definitely are there defensively which you don't like to see in a defenseman but he's really mobile moves the puck well and that is something that could probably help the abs right now who are looking to try to get on the score sheet uh, no offense to Jacob McDonald, but it's not like he was exactly playing stellar defense either for this team as he's getting, it sounds like, flex to forward tonight. So a little bit of, uh, I don't want to say change because it's the same guy, but another guy in a bit of a different role. How about that tonight? They do profile very similarly, and the breakdowns defensively that Jacob McDonald has had have almost looked like he was trying to play as a forward when he needed to be playing as a defenseman. So I'm curious to see what he does as a forward. I think I have a lot more confidence in McDonald's game on wing than what we've seen defensively. So I think it's good to get another guy a look to. It's, uh, the Evs have shown this with McDermott as well. It's significantly easier to shelter some of those shortcomings in a forward role compared to a defensive role, especially in the room the Avs are in right now where it's like, boy, do we really want to play Makar 27 minutes again tonight? I don't know. Might not might not be the way. So we'll see exactly how much usage guys like Hunt and McDonald get tonight. We'll see how much sheltering ends up going there. But 
Another player checked off the list. It, I, it was 35th player. Brad Hunt will be the 35th player to suit up for the Avs this year. So that would be uh, your your normal 23 plus 12. It's been a weird season. It's been a weird... <laughs> We're barely through December. It's been weird already. Not even really that close to the halfway mark at this point. And the Avs are at 35 different guys. So, Yeah. It's been something. That is that is for sure. I do want to get back to the Avs lines, though. I'm, I'm going to make it hard for you. You're not allowed to say Miko, Nuke, or Makar. Who do the Avs need to be effective tonight to have a chance to win? Oh, you can't say Georgiev either. Honestly, We've been saying new hook for a while now. I also feel like I have to say someone other than new hook because Fair. at this point it feels like a given. We just need new hook to step up. It's hard. It feels a bit unfair to put that amount of pressure on a player so young, but I, I just would like to see it for him, for him to step up and assume Definitely. more responsibility and show out too, especially with a little more talent alongside him. I don't know how the lines will shake out tonight. So he could be limited to it in what he's, he's given, but the other person that I'd like to see step up is honestly this entire line of the Cogliano, Comfort, OC. They have been playing above what they've needed to, but they are who I look to because of the leadership and maturity and the reliability of that line. When that line is on, it is an energy line. And so I think that helps the, the lines around them too to sort of model after that effort level. You're looking at a team that has, let's face it, just struggled to finish as they're currently constructed. Again, one goal at five on five in the last three games, and and really, uh, four of their goal, two of their four goals in the last three games have just not been meaningful. As a couple of six on five goals at the end of, of that one game against Philly, so yeah, I get it. Loc, Comfer, Cogliano, maybe not the best finishers in the world, but someone has to step up and start putting a puck in the back of the net. And like you said, you can only ask so much of the younger guys. New Hook maybe a little bit more than the rest. You'd like to see him do that. But you're going to get what you get out of Houdon and whoever else ends up being in the lineup on any given night, whether it's Cal Burke or Sampo Ranta, who neither of which I think are in. Well, no, Burke should be. Burke Ranta should is be, not. Foodie. Yeah. And then Houdon, I think, are our yeah. fringy eagles of... Hope you don't get completely crushed. That's <laughs> that's the goal for you guys. Definitely. So just reality there. As a team, how do the Avs perform more effectively at five on five? Uh, <laughs> Good answer. It comes back to the finish. Yeah, Because for sure. I think we saw in the Boston game that they generated a lot of chances. Um and so they just have to play with some confidence, some boldness, be unafraid to just shoot. And I think that ups the odds of the finishing touch, too, for every one of these players. Because you looked at even a player like Cal Burke had opportunities. Ben Myers had opportunities. Yeah. You want to see somebody, whether it is a Rantanen type or a Cal Burke type, with a little bit more finish five on five. Well, you know what they say. Can't score if you pass. So maybe keep it simple. Just shoot. <laughs> Um, look, I, I honestly feel pretty good tonight. I think we're going to see the Avs put in a solid effort. This is not a team that even with maybe a lack of talent in the lineup tonight, they don't usually put two bad games together. Uh, you saw like, yes, I get it. The Flyers game wasn't good, but it was significantly better than the two Boston games that it was sandwiched in between. So I do think we will see a decent effort from them tonight. Will that be enough? <laughs> I hope so. We'll see, though. I've seen New York in their latest string of games drop games to teams you would expect them to beat and beat teams you would expect them to have a, a harder time against. So for that reason, I think the Evs have a chance here to capitalize. Yeah, I. It's it's a weird feel for the Avs right now, right? Because you do get a lot of oh uh, well, they're they are the Cam Stanley Cup champs right now, so they get a lot of everyone's best, right? But and I think you saw this in the Boston game last night. Boston was like, boy, this is not the Avs team that we were expecting, and 
they did let their foot off the gas a little bit later in that game, so. They did. And there were even points where, like, you know Boston's not giving their best effort right now, and the Avs are barely clinging on. It was a little hard to watch at points. <laughs> it was. So I, I, am, I am definitely curious about that dichotomy, though, of are we going to see the Rangers come out and, and really put pedal to the metal there, or do they know the Avs are in a depleted state, to say the least, right now? Only the Rangers know that answer for another 20 minutes or so. <laughs> I've wondered how many teams can pre-scout the Avs right now because of how much the lineup changes <laughs> right. on any given morning with new guys that they've... I'm sure they have lots of scouts who are relatively familiar with some of these AHL call-ups, but it feels like a really difficult team to scout right now in advance. So hopefully some of that is hard to estimate when teams come in to play the Avs because there's a lot of personnel they're not familiar with come into the practice room and they just have Miko and Kale's names circled yeah, 17 that times. One, that one. <laughs> <laughs> the rest, whatever. This one feels made up. They just drew this name out of a hat. <laughs> oh, unfortunate, unfortunate times. But Valnichuskin's name on that list does definitely help the abs. Big name. Uh, one that, you know, other teams actually have to take seriously at the very least. Uh, all right. Did Blaze send us bets, or are we YOLOing? YOLO. Okay. I'm, I'm not prepared to, to do these bets, but we are sponsored by DraftKings, so I, uh, I actually don't think you can get very good odds on the Avs winning this game. The DraftKings has been very scared to actually give you good odds on Colorado Avalanche, even in their depleted state. But I do think... I'm expecting a bit of a low-scoring game, so I'm going to take the under here. One, because if the Avs want a chance to win, I don't think they can win a scoring race. I'll put it that way. Two, look, Igor, he's a good goalie, even if he has been struggling a little bit this year. And Megan, you tweeted it out about this show. Georgiev, you'd love to see him get a bounce-back game here. Yeah, because there's something about just capitalizing on the momentum of winning against his former team where he wanted this chance to be the guy, the starter in net, the guy to help bring a team in a rough December to some winning games, and this would be a great game to do it against his former team. Would love to see it. I, I think certainly look, we talk about Miko and Kale a lot just because of how important they are as skaters. But there's a pretty good argument that in the Avs' current state, Georgiev is the most important player on the ice for them. He is the difference between winning and losing most nights for the Avs because they can't just outscore their problems right now. So You want your goaltender to be confident. This you would do. be a great game to build his confidence. Would love to see him get back on the... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I guess I wouldn't call it a merry-go-round, but <laughs> back up on the horse. And the choo-choo train. <laughs> get back on the choo-choo train. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, beyond that, the under's at five and a half. It's even money, basically. Uh, you can do a quick parlay, which, honestly, not a bad one. Miko to score and Mika to score. One for both teams. All right, Miko so. and Mika. If you don't like my under, you can throw the over in on that and get plus 475. I have a question. Yeah. Is, is uh, Mika like the evil twin brother of Miko? <laughs> he is now. <laughs> I, they're not. I, I don't think. He does look like a dark version. Would Miko's evil twin not be Finnish, though, I guess? He'd be Finnish. Uh, no, he'd be uh, English. English. <laughs> well, Mika's not English, but. <laughs> He is now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Avs are plus 135 on the money line. That's not terrible, honestly. Maybe just go with that. Uh, okay. We are about 10, 15 minutes from puck drop. We're going to keep this one short for you because we got Mika. a watch along coming up. Be sure to join us for Real that. Quick, also, Mika is Swed Swedish. Yeah, right. We know. So Which, it counts. I, I think that's perfect. I mean... I, I guess I guess Finland and Sweden have a rivalry. Like you could call that the evil version. I guess that's fair. Uh, anyway, also chat. Everybody wish uh, the CEO of DNVR, Brandon Spano, a happy 40th birthday today. Having a party at the bar tonight. P.S. Don't come to the bar. It's close for Brandon's Good birthday. Good point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Anyway, we appreciate y'all. I'll see you in a couple minutes on the watch along. Uh, if not, tune in into that. Be sure to at least tune into the post game where we'll break it all down, good or bad. We'll see you whenever we see you.